at this time of the year, you know, there's a recurring theme in Ghana where there's a lot of um, you know, uh, destruction um, of property and loss of human life. Why is that? It is because of flooding. Now, this is a theme, this is a uh, phenomenon that is quite important to me personally, professionally. Um, so I want to talk about the causes of flooding. And then on the backdrop of that, you want to talk about the key professionals. Uh, when you, know, you want to acquire um, property and develop you know, for corporate or public. In a few instances, if, if I think it's quite critical, you can go out private as well. So the causes of flooding and uh, you know the relevant professionals that you may require in the, in the prevention of, of flooding or the backdrop of modern day flooding in Ghana. Number one, improper planning settlements. What is improper planning settlements? Um, you know they're, they're, uh, they're, you don't mean I source all across Accra. Um, these settlements are non-conventional housing units built from you know salvage materials like tin, corrugated um, sheets, or in a few instances or even wood. Yeah, wood. And uh, you know they they, they, they they lack the proper infrastructural infrastructure that they need you know there's no water there's no drainage no sanitation no waste disposal or even there's no even proper access to these settlements and these sometimes of these settlements are quite you know extensive and what happens what do you think will happen in a, in a settlement like that when there's extreme rain or storm water you know it goes without saying number two our drains, you know, our drains don't have the depth, you know, or width to accommodate the volume of water that is coming from our rains and, you know, and storms. You know, they don't. I don't know if it has to do with the growth rate of the population because obviously um, the population has grown from the 1950s um, to now. So obviously certain um, waste disposal or even, you know, as far as um, human occupation of um, properties in, in Accra has increased and obviously comes with it certain um, additional um, you know, layovers. So, but the drains as we have them now are not, you know, big enough to accommodate our drains and to make matters even worse we put filth in these drains they, our drains have become uh, our rubbish dumps so what happens is uh, it rains and you know a little bit of rain and these drains are overflowing into all sorts of areas um, you know and I think that these drains need to be covered we have too many open drains in this country and allow uh, people to be able to throw things into them. You know. So that's number two. Number three is that uh, our, you know, our metropolitan authorities are not adequately staffed for them to be able to follow up on every kind of construction that is going on. And they are unable to determine you know, whether the buildings that are being put in certain areas have been planned for them or whether they're in the right zones. So what happens is that these buildings, these buildings eventually end up in waterways, you know, blocking the otherwise free flow of water that has been consciously done uh, by our engineers. And, 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 and it's quite sad. So that's number three. And then number four, the final um, cause is, um, you know, a removal of surface vegetation. 
you know, we, we, we are so obsessed about paving everywhere. Even the residences are paved. Office buildings are paved. You know, um, there's so much paving. And what is what happens as a result of that is these waters, these storm uh, waters that are coming, are coming at an extreme speed. Uh, the ground is not able to absorb any of the water. You know, and then there's a lot more volume of water coming at us and coming at our drains, which obviously um, they cannot accommodate. You know, because of the fact that these um, surfaces have been removed, if you know, lots of vegetation like greens, trees, and stuff would uh, prevent the, the the you know the volume of water because some a lot of it would be absorbed into the earth but unfortunately because we have this sudden obsession with paving every place in this country is also uh, contributes to flooding now on the backdrop of these four key points i want us to look at the uh, professionals that you would require in, in you know if you if you um, acquire a you know, large piece of land you want to do you know, a corporate development or you know public or maybe, or maybe private so number one the key professional that you would need is a geodetic engineer now a geodetic engineer uh, measures the level of precipitation uh, on, your, on your site um, determine the flood levels and they can tell if the area is prone to flooding or you know has a potential of, 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 of flooding or there's a lot of moisture um, in the earth, and, and that will inform the second professional, the structural engineer, which you also need um, to, you know, determines the type of foundation that is going to be used, the width of that foundation, or even the height of that foundation. I mean, that information um, that is received from the genetic engineer will help the structural engineer to design um, your foundations appropriately. And obviously, of course, the drainage of the site is also a key, you know, a key thing that the structural engineer uh, would also design uh, based on the information that's received from the geodetic engineer. So, number one, geodetic, two, structural engineer, these two are very important. And number three, yeah, you want to look at the uh, environmental engineer. It's also very key here. Um, you know, these guys regulate um, waste management, um, air pollution, you know, and prevention of neighborhood spills. I mean, these are quite critical. Um, you don't want to, without those, you will have, you know, debris and all that, you know, that will eventually end up in our drains. And sometimes it blocks the free flow of, 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 of these um, um, uh, rainwater or, or storm water so it's also so the environmental engineer you know is, is, is quite key you know uh, prior to you know, development to regulate all that and then another engineer again you also need the traffic engineer you know engineer specialize he specializes in maintenance of safe and access road um, and emphasis is on evacuation and access to the site without any uh, conflict, you know, because these engineers um, design the access routes um, to and from your site, and obviously your site in relation to the uh, overall uh, movement pattern of the neighborhood is quite key. So, if the movement uh, or the access to the site is going to conflict with um, the otherwise smooth running of the area, uh, you know, the traffic engineer is there to sort it out. And these things can have um, you know, an impact on, on flooding as well. You know, you want to have easy evacuation and, you know, of, of, of storm and rainwater, and, or even the inhabitants of, of the property. So those are also key. And the last professional, um, the last professional, but certainly not the least, is the architect. And um, by virtue of the uh, planning principles required, he allows for the relevant tolerances in and around the building. Um, and obviously, 
the, the, the use of emergency evacuation is also quite a, a critical. Um, so evacuation out of the building and out of the site are key considerations that uh, the architect is also uh, um, concerned about. So the building is usually doesn't cover, shouldn't cover more than 40% site and a lot of people don't know this thing. <laughs> they want to say but let me use this site you know no you know in our local parlance it just means that i want to use you know every space around the site and that's that's not safe you want to use not more than 40 percent of your site to do go to do your development and obviously um, like i talked about these are the five key professionals the structural engineer is worried about your foundation depth height type and the drainage um, in and around the, the site. Geodetic is already measuring your flood levels. Uh, your environmental engineer is concerned about you know how the waste is managed. Traffic engineer is worried about access to and from the site. And obviously, then comes the architect um, who you know um, designs with the relevant tolerances in and around the building with making uh, provision for evacuation so folks as you can see it is very imperative that uh, these professionals are consulted in the event of a uh, key development if you have any questions or suggestions or issues that you want us to discuss please feel free to put them in the column below and please subscribe to this channel so we keep the information flow going thank you folks thank you folks for watching this is the pep review we'll talk to you again pretty soon